I'm Justin Wigan, I'm a sound artist and I am co-founder of the Book Sniffing Club. The Book Sniffing Club was set up as a reaction to a forthcoming lockdown, lockdown two which we're in now, uh, in terms of how people can investigate their senses and the resources at home. Because everyone, everyone was put in a position in first lockdown of being tied to the lack of things to do. And I think that's because people were put in their homes and it's the first time maybe they've spent that amount of time with family members for that long amount of periods. So you've got this internal stress going on inside the home and you've got stress going on outside the home with the lockdown and the pandemic. And one of the reasons for setting up the book sniffing club was to offer a decoy activity. And by that I mean something which can be fun, but have another meaning behind it. So the, I've always liked sniffing books. It's something I've done since a child. Um, whether it's from the really thick paper of comics in the 70s, or the kind of plasticky, inky paper from 80s pop magazines. It's always been something that I've related to touching and smelling, as well as reading. So it's always had a, a set extra sensory experience for me. And I wanted to rekindle that activity for other people. And I found out that, yes, other people do it. Not people talk about it, but they think, um, or they, they say afterwards if in the conversation going, oh yeah, I sniff books as well. Like it's some kind of secret shame. So it made sense to start to think about where we are in terms of activities for people and how arts can help people's well-being and how you can have a fun activity. And so we came up with the Book Sniffing Club, myself and a designer called James Ockleford. My name is James Ockleford. Um, I'm a graphic designer, I tend to, I work in all sorts of mediums, but the last couple of years, I suppose, fundamentally. This sounds stupid, doesn't it? I'm a beer designer. That's what I do most, that's what I'm most known for. Talking to Justin, he always in introduced things with quite a lot of enthusiasm. You think, this is this is just a bit bonkers. But, but I think I, I saw how my opinion changed during like a, like a 10 minute meeting with him. And like I was sniffing books first the evening then. It's like if I if I've done like a 180 on, on a project idea like this, they call and I can see the merit in it. They think, well, there'll be other people who are probably just the same as me, you know. We decided that this club should be something which could be interactive. So we set the club up and it's an online library. So people have a set of instructions, specific instructions that have been designed and with these instructions, they get guided through the process. Then they can upload the experience they've had online and then a digital book pops up on the shelf and then people can search through or submit themselves. So the submissions form, that was the one thing which I thought, well, I'm not sure how to go about that, but I wanted people to be able to do what they do on this site, which is input information about their sniffing and we used just this was a plugin uh, which we tested and we used a, a, a plugin which generates a post and it's you know, basically it, it kind of forces WordPress to accept that you know the admin the administrators created the post from what's done on the, on the front end. I mean, initially I was I did research around the the penguin books because that, that that's where the idea came from. A lot a lot of this stuff is sort of taken from. Um, I suppose how book design has been approached in the past and um, so th those penguin classic books you know everything which was you know um, if it was a romance it'd be one color if it was a travel book it would be in a different color and so on so I looked at those and thought well, do any of those really fit and then we realized that we couldn't really break down the books into those different categories the same anyway so I, just, I designed them all together basically in I used InDesign, which is quite easy to work with because yeah, you can just tweak, tweak the palettes as you go along. And and I avoided I avoided using RGB to design in 
because although it's, it's great for screen, what you want is something, we create something which is printable. Some of the responses have been quite emotive in terms of it unlocking memories, not just of the book and the story, but how the book got on the shelf or if the book's been passed down or if it was a gift from somebody. I was talking to a lady uh, and she said she had an old school book and the reason why she kept it is because her brother, and she said her baby brother who recently passed, had, um, it reminded me of her because when he was a baby he pooed on the book and there was this really raw moment between me and her of her sharing the fact that she lost her brother quite early on. There's this cute but slightly embarrassing kind of tale to it. <clears throat> we wouldn't have, we would not have been able to share that moment if she'd not smelt that book. So it's not just about sniffing the book, it's about what it unlocks. And once something's been unlocked, then it's an automatic process, it seems, to share that experience. So there's this, feedback that's happening between the action of smelling the book and unlocking an, uh, an emotive memory and then that being fed back to other people. So working with designer James from Refold has allowed me as an artist to engage in a different side of a practice and that's with merchandise. So James brilliantly has come up with all the visual designs for these engagement tools and those and these are specifically for the book sniffing ambassadors so we're reaching out to people who can influence others to sniff books the first idea we had was uh was to have bookmarks because you know, you need, you need a bookmark for every book, pretty much. And I think it's okay to keep one there. So I thought if someone gets a free bookmark and, and you know you're a book sniffer, then there's nothing funnier than having a, a, like a visible reminder in your book. So I thought that was quite a nice idea. And then we just used it to put instructions about how to sniff a book and how to enter it on the website. So, because the design which we came up with is, is a pretty straightforward design. So we've got, we've got tote bags. And we sort of deliberately went after a design that kind of looked sort of... I want a design that sort of resonated with the kind of idea of this early 80s, late 70s, kind of like kids clubs. You know, so just monochromatic, you know, just very simple layout and a little bit cheeky. I've got the design, I thought, well, if you've got this, you've got this kind of cool kids club, uh, you need badges, you know, for membership. So we've got these um, cool little enamel, these brass enamel ones made uh, just for the words sniff. So we've got these nice little metal pin badges. And I, I work with a couple of breweries. That's where most of my sort of day-to-day -day work goes. And so we thought, we're talking about World Book Sniffing Day, which is the 12th of December. I thought, how great would it be to have potentially, like, well, hundreds of people actively participating but thousands of people conscious of it but what well, would be nice to do something to sort of celebrate the day as well so we so talked with um, a brewer I worked with and thought we came up with uh, a, we came up with a, a porter and um, so it's, it's, it's a strong dark beer it's advertising the events you know just encourages uh, participation and you know gives a uh, you know gives a little bit of information about the um the event so so pretty excited about that that's going to be going out next week and we'll see see how that goes but yeah going back to where this merch goes we're reaching out to people and the idea is to have kind of like a, a book sniffing council so we have these these people who have of influence in certain areas which can then help lead people go back to sniffing books and one of the reasons that we want people to sniff books is that we want people to get back into actually reading the books. So there's these many levels of it. There's the, there's the re-engagement with a sense of smell because it's, that's demonized at the moment because of COVID and about the negative connotations of taking a breath and what that could rel relate to in terms of the disease. So we have that kind of addressed. Then we have this 
emotive memory experience of what it unlocks. And because of it unlocking kind of like positive experiences, you have this well-being side to it. Then on the third level, you've got this experience of people going back to the bookshelf and picking books and opening it and their eyes catching some text. So this idea of re-engaging people with the books in their collection also has a well-being element to it because reading is good for you and taking people away from the screens a bit more. So lockdown also equates to people being more on screens because it gives people a chance to finish that computer game. They can just sit there guilt-free doing 12 hours and finishing the game completely, which is fair enough. But is there other sides that we could be engaging in which is better for us? in terms of mental health. So reading obviously is proven to be good for the brain and for fighting kind of other things like Alzheimer's and dementia and things like that, reading is, um, is beneficial for that. So there's all these different levels to the project and by building this influential council, um, then we can reach out to people. So we're, we're calling on people to be part of the book sniffing club but also to be book sniffing ambassadors from all different areas in the creative sector. So we've reached out to writers, um, publishers, designers, artists, musicians. So we have a series of one-to-ones lined up with me. Um, the series is going to be called Sniff and Tell and it's a 10 to 15 minute kind of like interview with a person who's got a book and they're going through the process of sniffing the book and then we have a discussion around the memories it unlocked, what the book means to them. I'm still looking for the ultimate book to sniff. I've only read two books more than once, three books more than once actually because I get quite bored quickly and once I've read something then I need to move on from it. But there's a book called Roadside Picnic. Um, it's a science fiction book. And that's a fantastic book. And the other book is Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Which um, I had a bit of an obsession with by Philip K. Dick. Yeah, favourite books. No, I don't have favourite books. Not yet. I have a few favourite smells. I love the smell of mossy forests. I love the smell of frankincense. I love the smell of fresh spelt bread. I love the smell of washed linen. I love the smell of my child's breath in the morning. Um, I love the smell of cut grass. But I like the smell of cut grass more when it's not in summer because it's a real surprise. It's kind of like when you get a, a glass of water and you think it's lemonade and you drink it and for a moment your mind doesn't know where you are in the universe and everything is just pulled apart and your brain in the, very quickly puts things back together again. But that free falling feeling of not knowing where you are and why you are is really, really exciting. And I think book sniffing does the same thing because you've, you've got to approach the book um, and that first initial smell, you're hit by so much history and emotion that you have to almost like psychologically take a step back and, and assess what's going on. The brain does it very, very quickly. But then the brain seems to lay everything down and put things in categories. Oh, that was the summer with your grandparents. Oh, that was that present that the girlfriend that you broke up with give you. Oh, this is when you went on that caravan holiday. Um, it's kind of like a, a plan or a floor map, an emotional floor plan of, of experiences book sniffing in that way. There's no, there's no big intellectual backbone behind this. It's like people get different things from it, but there's a lot. I just think, you know, we're stressed out. We're stressed out and not, none of this year's not gone how any of us particularly anticipated or wanted it to go. And then just just to have something 
which can do in a, in a, in a few seconds, which is just a little bit silly. So that, that seems like a pretty good thing. I don't, I don't think there's potential for anyone to be massively offended by it. Um, just, just hopefully we'll just make people smile and, and maybe get them reading a book again as well. So if you're interested in book sniffing, we have a website which is interactive. It's booksniffers.club where you could submit your own book sniffing notes or look in the library and compare sniffing notes with someone else. Maybe you disagree with your version of a particular book uh, or maybe you just want to uh, make a note of maybe uh, sniffing something that someone's recommended. We have Twitter and Instagram so the Twitter is Sniff and Tell and Instagram is Book Sniffers Club. But we ask if people do sniff a book, hashtag as in, even take a picture of yourself sniffing a book and we'll put it on our website as well. Mm -hmm.